Hello, welcome to the webinar, How to Integrate and Automate Lead Management Processes brought to you by Trey.io. First, a little webinar instructions. Uh, all your audio is in listen-only mode. If you have any questions during the content session, feel free to ask them in the webinar chat. Uh, we'll cover them uh, mostly at the end, but if it's pertinent to the conversation, we'll add it in as we go along. And we're going to record this session and send it out to all registrants. So no need to take notes. Just sit back, relax, and listen to some really credible thought leaders here, uh, excluding myself, of course. This is Alex Ortiz. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Trey. Um, I've worked at places like Salesforce and Quantic Mind. And we have just a, a packed team here that has a big set of experiences around lead management. We'll have Hank Taylor, our Director of RevOps, here at Trey. He's great because he's both a Marketo expert and Salesforce expert and has come from uh, a couple good, good companies like Grow.com and Neo4j. Uh, I call him our Swiss Army knife. We have a guest speaker here today, uh, Amit from Clearbit. He's a chief business officer. And what's good about Amit is he's not only deep in data enrichment, but he also comes from the lead scoring space from Lattice Engines uh, years ago. So he's double trouble. Uh, we've had a uh, sickness in the family. Andrew's out uh, down for the count, but we've got Chris Howden, uh, one of our customer success engineers, subbing in for Andrew today. I'd also like to take the time to thank some of our other contributors. We call lots of friends that we know that are deep in lead management. And one of those friends was Lee Evan Liang who's the CEO of Lean Data, and another friend of ours, Jay Herrera, uh, who's a, a great Marketo Salesforce consultant from Intelligent Ecosystems. So with that, I wanted to touch on the topics for today. First, we're just going to set, set the stage. We're going to just hit on one of the best practices in lead management. Our assumption is that most people have heard these concepts before, so it's really serving as a quick reminder of what we're all working towards as marketers and salespeople and how to handle leads effectively. Then I'll talk about the macro challenges that we see across every customer that we work with and in our own set of, sets of experiences. Then we'll transition to more uh, use cases and processes that we all grapple with, and we'll show you both um, the concepts and then do quick demos just to put some, some meat on the bone uh, to give you an idea of how people are getting some of these process challenges resolved. And then finally, we'll, we'll recap some of the benefits that, that you'll get from automating your lead management processes. And then finally, leave 10 minutes at the end for a Q&A session. So you might ask, can you remind me, Alex, what are those best practices that you're referring to? Well, we would say that it's in marketing or sales, and we've said this for a decade. And a lot of what good processes look like is finding the right person to market to or to sell to. It's delivering the right message to that person, getting the right rep to deliver the right message to the person, basically the right resource, and then also reaching out at the right time. There's a lot of different catchphrases that have evolved over the 15 years I've been in enterprise software. Today, people are talking a lot about the customer journey. And the customer journey is a, a pretty important frame to think about how our leads and prospects are experiencing our business. And if you think about it from the customer point of view, they also want to make sure that they're finding the right vendor, that that vendor is giving them valuable information at the right time, not too much, not too little, not too generic, but just right. They really want that Goldilocks experience in their customer journey. And so obviously we keep that front and center as customer-focused marketers and salespeople. But there's a lot of things that are getting more complicated through the, through the years. And when I first started in marketing, you know, there was Salesforce to manage your CRM, and then there was Marketo. And life was pretty simple. You had a couple apps, and luckily some of those apps were already pretty well integrated. But what we find ourselves in in 2017 is a wholly different ecosystem. You know, we laugh that you know, we've got more technology than we've ever had before, 
but in some cases we're having more problems than we've ever had before. I think a lot of organizations that I've certainly been part of this uh, are spending more time just trying to manage the technology angle and unfortunately we're forgetting how to market and there's a lot more to marketing than just plugging in technology. So you know, these are the, the MarTech stack uh, diagram and the sales stack uh, diagram which are quite honestly overwhelming for anyone to take in. And as a VP of marketing, I think about building competitive advantage across sales and marketing and in our own stack. And so when I see this smart tech landscape, it pr produces a lot of anxiety because I have to ask myself, do we have the best solutions for each point of the stack? I'm not sure. Is there a new solution coming out there that say my competitor is using that's giving them an advantage? I'm not sure. There's too many for me to parse, quite honestly. And so, you know, it's both good and bad that we have all these new options, but, you know, once your stack gets beyond two to three components, it starts to become unwieldy to manage. And I'll give you a personal anecdote. Uh, you know, a couple companies ago, I was in a, a board meeting and I was asked a pretty simple question. How are those you know, how are those paid search leads converting in the revenue funnel? And quite honestly, it was harder to answer than I would like to admit. And part of that was I was managing a marketing organization that had 15 different tools in it. Half of them were integrated and half of them were not. And so it's really hard to trace the customer journey across all these different tools and understand what's moving the needle in marketing or sales who's converting, what are the conversion rates, what are the velocities through the lead funnel. And it's quite embarrassing for any, any marketing or sales leader. So what we want to do today is show you just a few examples of what we see our customers doing to resolve some of these integration problems. You know, the first part that, you know, I would advocate for anyone to think about is how do you make, how do you get control, how do you make intelligent decisions on your apps and how do you control them and integrate them in a smart way. And it doesn't matter what your stack is. Most people today obviously have a marketing automation platform and a CRM, but there's new, there's new players, there's new tools on the, on the ground that people should be taking advantage of. Whether it's you know, personalized mass email through you know, email outreach vendors like Outreach, for example or there's new vendors that are providing a plethora of data that's just sitting there waiting to be used and used more effectively, like Clearbit. There's new tools to engage your customers from your website via web chat, whether it's Intercom, Drift, or any of the other web chat vendors. And there's even new vendors that are helping us instrument the customer journey in a molecular fashion. And I would call this segment, for example, there you can take event data from anything that's happening on your website or your trial and start to build personalized journeys around actual user engagement behavior, very um, accurate behavior. And there's lots of other tools we're all using across the enterprise. You know, here at Trey, we also have to think about post sales. You know, how do we integrate with our task management system, Asana, and how do we make sure that everyone knows when there's a big deal to be worked on. And so integration today can give you a leg up on not only picking a best of breed solution, but getting the value out and making sure that it's a coordinated experience, not just from a data standpoint, but also from a customer journey standpoint. And so what I'd like to do now is introduce Hank to kick us off on a specific process and use case. And we'll We'll get into a few uh, other examples as well. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, we've got <clears throat> um, we have a few processes we just kind of wanted to touch on today, and a few we'll demo. Um, so this first one um, is one that um, it's really about that right time um, as to reaching out to leads. So, for example, we have a customer. Um, who gets leads from G2 Crowd. And the problem with G2 Crowd leads is that they are, the problem is that they're hot leads that need to be touched immediately. 
or their interest will decay very quickly over time. We've, we've all heard, you know, the stats on, oh, if you wait five minutes, your lead seven times less likely to answer the phone or, and stuff like that. So our customer had this problem, and I face this too, where you get one of these leads in the middle of a meeting, and then you're wondering, well, do I become less attentive in this meeting, um, which can be rude, and maybe, you know, that's just bad, um, or do I let this lead go cold? It's a lose-lose situation. So what our customer did was that, oh, hey, I can actually look at G2 Crowd's API here. They have a webhook thing, which actually, you know, it, it used to be a scarier thing, um, but there are tools out now that make this really simple. And so he figured out, okay, I can use this webhook. I can reduce all the errors that I would often make. You know, when you're rushing during a meeting to get a lead into the system, if you assign it to the wrong owner, um, especially if it's an owner that's not at the company anymore, that lead's gone forever. You've, that's a mistake that you're not going to catch maybe for weeks, if ever. Um, so automating can get you around these problems. And Chris can actually show us um, the way our customer did. Yeah, thanks, Hank, um, for that. Um, so yes, as, as Hank was saying, um, you know, G2 Crowd, they have an API, they have a way of sending what's called a, a webhook um, to a service like Trey. Um, and what that means uh, is, is that effectively G2 Crowd is, is notifying us immediately in real time um, when, when that new review is added. Um, so you know, in, that, in that notification, that will contain details like the, the actual review text, the rating, etc., um, but also some of the more um, uh, personal details, namely the, the email address. Um, now, why that matters is because you know, the email address is, is very commonly used as a, uh, an identifier uh, across, across different tools. So you've got tools like Salesforce, tools like Marketo. Um, so, so with this, uh, with this information, we can actually go in, uh, and save those details directly into, into the CRM and, and also if we wanted to send, um, send relevant notifications um, as well. Um, so if I just, if you can see on the screen here, uh, at the moment we've got this, this G2 Crowd webhook. So uh, this workflow will start every single time a new review happens in, in G2 Crowd. And then what we can do is we can say, right, okay, um, first things first, um, we want to talk about um, inserting um, this lead into Salesforce. Um, so you can see here we've got you know, a number of different ways of interacting with the, uh, the Salesforce um, uh, API, uh, and these, these are very similar tasks to what you do actually in the Salesforce interface itself. Uh, now you can see here we can, uh, we can insert any kind of record in Salesforce. Um, you know, this connector is very flexible. We can populate any kind of custom object, custom field, etc. So uh, we may want to um, naturally pass in details like the, the email address, uh, and you can see that we're, we're passing data from um, the G2 Crowd notification. Uh, directly into Salesforce. Um, so you know, when that notification comes in, we can go and create a lead uh, accordingly. Uh, but sometimes we'll want to go and um, set up some, some slightly more static values as well. So for example, you might want to set the lead source and you might say actually this lead source is, is G2 Crowd, for example. Um, so at, at the basic level, um, you know, this, this kind of workflow enables us to actually insert um, leads into Salesforce, or you know, into Marketo would be a very, a very similar approach. Um, but actually, where, where the real uh, the power and the benefit um, comes in here is, is when you start to apply a, a degree of intelligence. Um, so that person who's left a review on G2 Crowd, uh, they may or may not um, already be in your CRM and already in your, your marketing system. Obviously, it, you know, it's ideal if they, if they already were. Um, but if they're not, uh, you know, we need the ability of, of saying, okay, right, we're going to insert them in this case, and we're going to um, notify the relevant sales rep um, that the sign to their account in this case, or maybe um, send them an automated email. So one of the uh, one of the things that Trey can help with there is we have this this Boolean condition, this this conditional logic um, step just here, and what this enables us to do is to set up conditions to say, right, okay. We only want to insert the lead into Salesforce. Let's 
just for, um, to keep things simple, let's call this step insert lead. Um, but first of all, we want to check whether they're already a lead in Salesforce. So we can, we can do things like uh, find, um, find existing records. Uh, so we want to find existing leads um, where the email address is matching that email that's coming in from, from GC Crowd. So we can say lead, let's get the, the full name, and let's also get the um, email address. Um, and we'll do that when the email address is matching the email coming from G2 Crowd. So again, we're, uh, we're passing data from the G2 Crowd um, data coming in, uh, and that will uh, pass to the Salesforce step. So let's, let's call this find existing lead. Um, and we can also do things like um, attach the, the owner as well. So you know, as, as I mentioned a moment ago, you could do things like automatically notify the relevant account owner uh, via Slack or email or otherwise. Uh, letting them know personally um, that that the, the review has come in and, and you know, for the sales rep to reach out and, and thank them. So so I won't won't build the whole thing in front of you now, but I'll just flick over to one that I've created previously, which is it's very similar. So you can see here we've got um, this example. The webhook comes in. If they're already a lead, we find the relevant sales rep and we message them accordingly in Slack so they can they can reach out. Um, but if they're not a lead, we can insert the lead and then message and more. Um, generic uh, reviews um, channel in Slack. Um, and everyone says to do something along the lines of um, send them a, uh, an immediate campaign via Marketo um, or send them some kind of transactional email. Um, that's all very possible as well simply by adding um, another step to, to this workflow. Great. Thanks, Chris. We have a good question coming in here. Let me just uh, handle that or uh, speak to that. And the question was, so how is this different from, say, uh, Zapier or other uh, easy-to-use integration platforms? What specifically does Trey sell at or Zapier falls flat or is this direct competitor? That's a great question. I would say where Trey fits in the world is handling more complex integration challenges where some of the the cheap and cheerful integration platforms fall flat. And so let me give you an example. When Chris just showed you that Boolean uh, operator, uh, I think we're maybe the only vendor that's doing this with all the conditional logic operators that you need. And we're also adding a lot of enterprise level features. So no matter if you're a startup or a fast growing company, quite honestly, you probably need alerting, meaning like if you're workflow breaks, you probably want a proactive alert on it. And then also in terms of scaling the data, uh, you know, if you only have uh, a little bit of data flowing through your system, that's okay. Any vendor could probably handle that. But once your data volumes go up, like if you connect a segment or any other event data source, all of a sudden data volume and fast processing matter. And that's where trade comes in as well, is we're built to scale to high velocity with no latency. And that's a place where, say, Zapier uh, isn't operating. We, we love Zapier. We think they're doing a great job of uh, basically advocating for business people to take control of their integrations. And so we think that's a, a good mission and a good message out there. And Trey is there to handle the more complex situations and make them easier for business people. OK. Cool. So, um, Alex, actually, you were going to talk about this process B. That's right. So, we just talked about how to automate leads getting into your systems. Then the question becomes, what do you do with those leads? Uh, but before you do do something with those leads, you have to check. You have to do two important steps, and that is make sure that it's not a duplicate lead. This is the bane of all marketers' existence, right? You you go to a an event and you collect all these business cards or, or batch scans, and guess what? Some of those people already exist in your database. Uh, and when you upload them, you're either going to create duplicate leads or mismatched leads. The second big challenge that, that most of us face is that the data is wildly inconsistent. You might get a business address from one lead, and the same lead months later gives you a Gmail address and maybe a different phone number. So it's really hard to make sense of the fact of whether this is the same person, maybe they move companies, there's overlapping data values. 
And then finally, once you have the, the lead clean, a data clean, what do you do with it? Who do you send it to? Do you send it to your nurture queue? Do you send it to your SDR team? Do you send it to an enterprise account manager? Uh, what do you do? So there's lots of solutions out there in the market. Um, you know, we happen to use Marketo, but most marketing and automation systems have native deduplication uh, within it. Uh, we also happen to use Salesforce. They have some deduplication if, you, if you're just using, say, a CRM system and no marketing automation system. But not all dedupe systems are created equal, and that's why there's actually a market for third-party deduplication services, both technology services and people-based services. So I've used some of these in the past, and they have been effective for me in basically deduping stuff that's, that's that the native integrations aren't handling completely. Usually they're not 100%, and if you were trying to squeeze out from say 80 to 100%, some of those third-party vendors might be worth taking a look at. And finally, for the lead to account matching process, there's also quite a few vendors out there that can help you do this. Essentially what they're taking is you know, your lead data, looking at your database, and doing some fuzzy logic or fuzzy matching to give you a, a, a better chance of identifying whether that lead maybe is, belongs in one of your top 100 account lists that a specific AE owns. And that will also help you have a happy sales team that gets along so no one's swiping each other's leads. So I've got no demo there, but I just want to point that out. These are challenges I've had before. And, um, and again, other solutions are there to solve it. Let's go on to the next process. Cool. So lead recovery is an interesting concept and it, it really comes, you know, as your tech stack grows, the chances increase um, that you're going to have leads trapped or lost in one system um, or in a CSV somewhere that aren't being marketed to um, just, be, just by virtue of those systems not being integrated. So we actually have a personal example from here at Trey. We had a lot of people signing up through our chat service, which is Intercom. And we don't have, um, we, we didn't have Intercom integrated with Salesforce or Marketo um, until we realized, oh, people are signing up through here. We have lost leads in here um, that we want to, you know, get to. and, and try to help more and nurture more, et cetera. Um, so we were able to unlock hundreds of leads just by connecting these systems. And um, I can actually show you how we did this. So I'll share my screen here. So here's Trey. Um, I'm just going to create an intercom. Let's do an intercom to Marketo. Um, I, I generally like all my leads to come in through there. So we actually have an intercom trigger, and you can see we have a whole bunch of triggers here. Um, one thing I've been playing around with lately is doing slash commands through Slack to initiate a trigger, but I'm getting off track here. Um, so we can have an intercom trigger. Um, you know, if you add authentication here, you know, that's necessary. We'll just use a, a web host, which intercom does automatically. And if I look at all the possibilities of um, what to trigger off of, um, I'm going to find contact added email. So whenever we have someone who gets an email added to their intercom account um, with us, this will send us data here. So now, um, if I wanted to do the simplest integration possible, that's pretty much all I need to do. I have the action here. I have the lookup field, which is email, and then I can start mapping the lead field. So I can say I want, you know, email address, you know, to come from these attributes here, and you can see, if you can look at the output on here and start mapping those. Um, but we can get a little more sophisticated with it, like. Chris was pointing out, um, I mean, this is, you know, if I have trapped leads, I want to do this and start loading ASAP. 
Um, but ongoing, I might want to do something like, well, let's look up if the lead already has a Marketo record. And um, I can, so I can change the um, operation here. Oh, our Marketo one can't, but our Salesforce one can. not um, So I can look for, sorry. So I can look for Salesforce owner and see, okay, who's the sales rep that owns um, this email address coming in? And if there's no sales rep who owns that, I can assign one immediately and notify them through Slack. You know, that was something from Chris's earlier workflow. Um, and if not, um, yeah, you know, you can set up alerts just like that. Um, so that's a pretty simple one. This actually recovered hundreds of leads for us and has, you know, helped us keep those in sync. Um, and we're actually going to build on the same workflow in a little bit, um, but first amidst going to kind of tell us the theory of what we're going to do next. Perfect. Thank, thanks so much, Hank. Uh, this is Amit Vasudev with, uh, with ClearBit. Really, as it comes to, as it pertains to customized onboarding, customer education, the question is really, can we provide potential buyers with enough information at the right time to understand the value of your product and experience the right journey? So in B2B, what that usually means is it's a combination of your website, maybe a trial experience, uh, possibly a high-touch sales cycle. Now, the role of data, and especially data with automation, is that, you know, can you use that to better personalize or customize each of those touch points, whether it's seeing more contextual case studies, whether it's getting sent information that's more applicable to somebody else in your role. There's really no way to do that without a systems uh, architecture that supports that and without high-quality information, both from a third-party provider like ClearBit or even internally from your CRM, from your market automation system. And really at, at, at ClearBit, kind of our business is, hey, we want to provide people with the best data through an API, communication, so that you can do these advanced use cases. Now, the good news is that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't have to have a ton of development and have a highly personalized website experience and kind of, you know, full-on developer, this and that. There's, there's easier things that any marketer can do as far as helping, again, create a situation where their leads, their potential buyers are getting the right information with fairly low human touch and then, of course, are filtered and sent into the right journeys, whether that's high-touch sales, whether that's a more automated nurture campaign, or whether it's just a free product or a free trial. Um, I'll walk you through kind of an example of a pretty simple uh, workflow that we have at Clearbit that we've seen quite a few others adopt uh, including Trey, and, and Hank will walk you through how they've actually set this up internally. But really the premise is right at that form fill, what's going to happen next? So what we used to do at Clearbit, we have a lot of products. We have developer products. We have marketing products. We have sales products. We used to send a generic email saying, hey, you should try any of these different things, any of them could work, and kind of hope people kind of chose their own adventure and got to the right sets of content. What we do now is something that's quite a bit more sophisticated but very easy to implement. Basically, upon form fill, so I stole this little form icon from Trey's site, what Clearbit does is instantly take something like an email address and turn that into 100 other data points. So if you can see in the little text here, that's things like a person just from their email. It's things like a person's title, where they live, how many social influencers they, or followers they have. And in B2B, at the company level, it will also return things like how big is the company, what tech do they use, uh, have they raised VC funds recently, uh, what's their industry. And to connect the dots, the idea is that, okay, based on that kind of third-party data flowing in, can you then influence what they see and experience after that? And probably the most universal onboarding people do is through email, and that's both B2C and B2B. So what we decided was, well, what if based on that data about the people and companies, what if that could influence the experience they see next as far as their welcoming? So what we do and, and how we kind of customize that is, let's say we have three signups. One is an SVP of marketing in San Francisco with a lot of Twitter followers. 
Um, the second would be somebody who's maybe at a B2B SaaS company with, you know, looks like a pretty good fit, but they're maybe a junior person. And the third lead is, is somebody who, again, probably isn't qualified. Now, I think traditionally with, with scoring, you say, hey, just give them a score and figure it out from there. The next level and kind of what customers are doing is, well, don't just kind of take information and then throw it in a vacuum. It's like use that to actually drive actions and influence. So what we set up at Clearbit is a couple different engagement points. Uh, number one, we'll set up a welcome sequence that appears, you know, it's meant to appear like a more generic welcome, but it's definitely more customized. So we'll say, hey, marketers see value in this way. Here's maybe a link to a case study. And if they're of a certain seniority or at a company that looks really great, the CTA will be different. We'll say, okay, book a demo with sales because in those situations, we'd rather have high touch. Now, in the second example, let's say somebody more junior from a highly qualified account, what we may say is, okay, we'll use ver merge tags, variable tags, again, all things you can do in any marketing automation system to say, other companies like you see value in this way, but the CTA may be different. Say, okay, try our free trial or use something free and let's see if you're even interested and go from there. And then in the last circumstance, we may just say, here's the free trial, check it out, let us know if you have questions. Now, at Clearbro, what we also do is that's one sequence, and we'll have several sort of steps after that. What we'll also do is send what appears to be a very personalized email from sales, again, something fully automated, in only, certain, only for certain qualified uh, leads. And what we'll say in those is, again, we'll make the emails look more personal. Um, and what it'll say is, again, highly templated, highly customized, based on all these different data points, saying, hey, it looks like you, know, you guys use Marketo, we have an integration that works really well with Marketo. You know, here's an example of how we can do that. You know, here's my calendar. Let's book it. And we kind of will have that different uh, engagement point. And as you can kind of see from this diagram here, ultimately you can build a graph of what you want the journey to look like for different types of individuals and companies. And then lastly, you know, again, email is, is the easiest thing to do. Um, but as, as Hank had mentioned earlier, you know, we see the propagation of live chat every single day as everybody's using it. And let's say for like this person, Sue, who's, you know, absolute best possible lead, we also probably want to hit her with live chat. Again, typing in this data through Trey from Clearbit, when she shows up, let's say she doesn't check her email, you can then customize the chat to say, hey, Sue, here's the same information to make sure that she's getting all the information you want her to see so that she can execute on her journal properly. So I'll pass it back over to Hank here, and he'll show you kind of a real-life way in which, again, Trey, who's is doing this with a lot of sophistication is, is doing this exact same process. Yeah, so I'll share my screen here again. We'll go back to we'll go back to that workflow um, and we'll build on a little. So yeah, if I use um, if I use Clearbit here, um, we can actually enrich this lead so it's the same uh, type of thing. I can get person and company info by the email I look up. You know, you just look it up from there, and then it's going to output all these fields. If it if it has a match, it'll find all these fields. And you could even you could even add extra Boolean logic to say what to do if there isn't a match or if there is. But um, that we don't do that too much. What what we do is we'll have Boolean logic that will say, okay, look at the clear bit. Um, so there's a lot of info to scroll through here. I'm looking for industry. Or actually, here's a good one to use. Oh, something's going on with my scrolling. Sorry. Text flare. Okay, so let's look at annual revenue. This is this is one people are always interested in. So if I pull in annual revenue, and I could say if that's greater than a billion, now we can actually do some interesting things. Like this is an enterprise company. Um, oh, we've got a network connection there. Is my screen still sharing? Yeah, I see it's sharing, but it's frozen. So we might have a little bit of web platform difficulty, which happens to the best of us. So. Let's go yeah, ahead. Yeah, this looks like a uh, try to work work through that. Or we could probably switch over to. It looks like I was dropped from the webinar. 
Um, okay. All right. It wasn't, it wasn't our tech, at least. It was just our webinar tech. Um, well, maybe you can just finish the thought and yeah. then we'll... Well, so something we do... Oh, I was excited to show you this. We actually have an email. One of our first emails will dynamically show content um, because you can do dynamic emails in Marketo. And so if we find Clearbit data that shows that you use Salesforce, we'll promote some of our Salesforce integrations to you. And that's, that's one of the things that's super um, helpful when you integrate your data is it allows you to use your tool on the next level. I couldn't use that feature of Marketo that way um, before, you know, using the, the tech lookup that quickly. And what's great, uh, what I also would have loved to show you, um, and sorry that dropped there, is I can send that info right back into Intercom. Um, so I can just drag a little Intercom box down at the bottom there, send all that Clearbit data at the same time I'm sending it to Marketo back into Intercom. And you can have, Intercom allows you to do dynamic auto messages based on that same data. So now you can be communicating people in the right place and with the right content. Um, yeah, um, very sorry that that crashed. Well, that's great. Uh, so let, let me recap what we just saw and describe what a lot of people see when they complete the automation steps that we just we just went through. So we first talked about how to automate the importing of leads. And what that's about is really speed. That's over there on the, on the upper right, that gear. So the faster you get leads into your system, the more likely you are to make contact. I, I've read a lot of studies. I think there was a good one put out by Inside Sales. It has really great infographics that basically showed the difference in conversion rate between a company that could follow up within five minutes versus 10 minutes and it's quite a big gap in conversion rate. So obviously we're all working hard to follow up on those leads, especially if they're hot leads from, say, G2 Craft, right? We don't want to spend time uploading it. And it's really hard when the leads come in, in predict unpredictably. So by automating it with webhooks, you can rest easy that they're going to get into your system. And then once they're in your system, you can use third-party software to deduplicate and also identify whether or not they already belong to a top account and a rep at a top account. And that just makes for the coordination of lead management uh, much more simple for everyone. Then we talked about how do you enrich, how do you provide basically a personalized experience both from a marketing sales and post-sales perspective. And what this is, this is really about is adding the benefit of giving the right message by the right person. And no longer are we sending out generic emails uh, that have very little information, but now we have so much more data at our fingertips. It's demographic data from sources like Clearbit. It's behavioral data from sources like Intercom. It's account level data that's already sitting in Salesforce, but once it's matched, you can now use that, whether you're an SDR, a salesperson, or a customer support person. And then finally, just finally instrumenting your process to know not just what page they saw your website, but what specifically did they click within your website. Knowing that is the difference between a personalized email and a generic one. Anyone could show you that, hey, someone saw a pricing page, but what about that pricing page were they interested in? That's the information that we're all searching for to send that one email. Um, so again, this is about finding the right person at the right time uh, and delivering the right message. And then bringing it up one level, you know, one of the, the major benefits of just integrating and automating is having the agility, like giving yourself back the 10 to 15 minutes that it takes every day to upload something having that time back to be thinking about higher level challenges like you know, 
messaging challenges or other parts of your, your marketing stack that need to be optimized. And I think the big message here is that there's lots of new vendors out uh, on the scene in the last few years, Trey included, that are really taking, giving this power to business people, to marketers, to sales ops, to customer support ops. You know, before integration, whether it was you know, old school companies like Informatica or MuleSoft or Boomi, that was always the realm of dev and IT. And while we love our partners in Dev and IT, they're underwater with too many requests and their, their queues are too long. And usually what falls by the wayside is, hey, integrating that marketing stack, or hey, how about we integrate that sales stack? That usually falls to the bottom. They really should be focused on product more than supporting other areas of the business. And so there's this new, there's this new phenomenon, a new set of vendors that are helping business people do this directly. And we saw that with Hank, who's our revenue ops person who's quite comfortable going in and automating some of these steps that have been bothering us as marketers for years. I can tell you I've struggled with web chat integration because they're leads, right? I'm paying paid search dollars to, to drive leads to my website, and when they're engaging through chat, oftentimes I lose all the optics on conversion rates. In my mind, those are conversions, and we want to get those into our system. It just happens to be that the interaction point was something that was separate from Marketo, but now with automation I can bring that back in. And as a marketer, that gives me a lot more control and, uh, and it gives me a lot, of, uh, a lot of metrics that I can work with now where before we, we had lost data. We had data that wasn't clean. It was very hard to report, report into. And so you know, on my next board meeting, I can go in fairly confidently to tell our team, our board members, our exec team, what's actually happened, right? Not just that you've collected the lead, but what's, what's come of it. Has it progressed down the sales funnel? Has it converted? At what revenue? And all the, all the questions that any board member is going to ask. Uh, and so I think here we're, we're, we're seeing a new way to move forward from that overwhelming MarTech diagram into a place where we can all be more productive. Um, so with that, what I want to do now is open it up for any questions the audience might have. And it usually takes people a few minutes to kind of get their brain juices flowing again into question mode. But uh, I think there's, let's just give it one minute. And I see, I see a question coming in now. Yeah, well, we, we do have um, kind of a question comment um, clarifying from earlier. They said, so it seems like you're more focused on medium enterprise, whereas um, Zapier seems to be more on small medium. Um, I, I think I have a good clarification for this and, and kind of what Alex was getting at. At my last company, I used Zapier, um, and it was my first time using it. I had friends tell me about it, and so I was excited to try it. And I was very excited about um, some of the things I was able to do with it. One of them was splitting. Um, if you have a one, one field on a form for full name, um, so you can reduce the number of fields on a form to get higher conversion, then you can use Zapier to split that name into first and last, uh, and then push that back in. And that was like a sweet, just a little simple piece of automation that helps you get, helps you get that nice little increment um, in conversions. And then another one I did was, oh, I can like capitalize stuff. That's neat. Um, with Trey, I've been much, well, so the problem I came across was I hit the ceiling pretty quickly once I started um, letting my imagination run wild on things I wanted to automate. Um, and as you can see with Trey, with the Boolean logic, um, and actually our, our CTO has shoved a lot of features in there that some people have gone really complex with. Um, so I think maybe it's less of a um, medium enterprise size company versus small medium company and more of a, um, if, you want, if you want a high ceiling on your flexibility and power, I would say that's kind of where we're specializing. Great, thank you. So I have a question here which I'll direct towards Amit at Clearbit. And 
the question is, you know, can this help me do website personalization? Can, is there a way to automate processes to do that? Yeah, great, great question. There's, there's really a, a technically more involved way to do things. There's slightly less so, but the short answer is absolutely. Um, not to be too salesy, but one of Clearbit's products is reverse IP. I think we talked about email enrichment post sign up, but pre sign up, we also have a product called Reveal that is used to take an IP address and map that to a given company. So one of the predominant use cases of that is to integrate that into a tool like an Optimizely or, or a, a, a VWO or Google Optimize and say, okay, if visitors on the site are of this company size or in a specific segment, change the content to that. Now, the reality is you know, personalizing your website is a pretty big investment. And I think you know, in terms of quick wins, we see things like integrating data into chat, into email campaigns, uh, as quicker wins, but certainly you absolutely can and should enter into the website, but you know, requires usually having a personalization platform and really the uh, ability to create site variants because that's ultimately what you have to do is, hey, I'm not just creating one version of my website. I need to go in and have the developer resources, have the content resources to go and create a bunch of variations. But once you do that, there's incredible potential. And again, the systems and tools like Trey, Segment, others, really can help you uh, push and pull that data in different places so you can kind of have it all at your fingertips, like Alex said. Great. Great answer. So I'll just give one a time for one more question. I know we had a 50-minute uh, time for this, but this is a good question. And uh, I'll make this a generalized one, and that is how do I get help with my automation strategy and execution? And you know, quite honestly, we, we here at Trey have – uh, people like Chris and Andrew who talk through this stuff every day. They eat, sleep, and drink marketing automation. So feel free to reach out to us. And that's probably a good segue to um, to what what might be on your mind and how how do I how do I get additional resources? So we're building out our blog posts, and you'll see more and more of those about specific use cases. We have a few up there uh, on the marketing integration automation side. We've got some good customer stories that can give you ideas. We have Digital Ocean, who, and that's uh, David Dorman, who's the director of growth over there. He's got he's actually tackling five or six use cases. Uh, Box Media, they're doing some interesting post sales automation, and then of course Outreach, that's doing I think five or six different types of automation. So those case studies will give you ideas on what's possible, uh, and then of course feel free to engage with us either through our contact form or if you sign up for the trial we have in app support and we're happy to walk people through this. And I'll just say that there's no, you know, one one size doesn't fit all. And part of what we're advocating for is that every cost, every business should be optimized in a different way. There's certain data values that might be valuable for company A and not company B. And there's certain ways to build competitive advantage through better processes. And so uh, we're here to help empower people to really discover a more efficient way to work and hopefully a better way to grow your companies. So with that, I'd like to thank all of our speakers, all of our thought leaders, and uh, especially want to thank our audience for, uh, for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to ping us from our website. Thank you. <laughs>